Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with the Ryzen 3000 series, specifically a 12-core, 24-thread Matisse part that has been spotted on the user benchmark database. Now, this entry is very important for several reasons. One, we get some clock speed information of the early engineering sample. We also have some technical specs and we also have a rough indication of how the processor is performing. Plus, of course, it confirms a 12-core part exists, which isn't too surprising. After the AMD CES event, Lisa Su was speaking to journalists and did confirm that, yeah, okay, we are going to be releasing uh, processors with higher than eight cores, but she did decline to comment. She just said, well, there's additional space in the die and that Typically, we increase core count, but we're just not ready to reveal how many cores. Most people will know by now that there have been a lot of leaks, along with a lot of speculation that AMD are going to 12 cores, 16 cores, which of course means 24 and 32 threads respectively. So what do we actually know regarding this entry? Well, the CPU is running with a base clock of 3400 megahertz, but in terms of turbo frequency, it runs up to up to, excuse me, 3700 megahertz. We also learn critical details concerning the uh, level three cache because it is being listed here as 32 megabytes, which means that uh, each of the eight processor cores in each of the dies does indeed uh, have 16 megabytes of level three cache in it. So this is very similar architecturally to what we saw with the original Ryzen series of CPUs, both Ryzen uh, 1000 and 2000, where of course each of the CCXs, which was uh, composed of four CPU cores, was connected to eight megabytes of level three cache. So when you had like, let's say a 2700X, you saw 16 megabytes total of level three cache. This also means a couple of things. One, that uh, if you have a 12 uh, core processor, assuming this remains true for non-engineering samples, those 12 core processors actually have access to all of the level three cache still. So it's not like, you know, um, 16 megabytes and then the other four processor cores only have access to uh, eight megabytes. Instead, it's like 16, 16. I hope that makes sense. We also notice that according to the results here, there was just a single stick of memory being used. It was running at 2,666 megahertz and had a capacity of just four gigabytes we can have a couple of takeaways from that. One, this is obviously drastically impacting the results. With only a single stick, dual channel memory is not available, which obviously means the total system bandwidth is cut down. And the second thing is it most likely indicates that AMD are not trying to stress the IO controller and other parts of the processor. They are simply trying to make sure that everything works right now. They are just making sure that the CPUs, uh, the clock speeds and everything else are just up to par. And then they can worry about other things later on. So this is not like we are benchmarking this to see what it's capable of. Instead, this is, this is engineering sample. Uh, this is an engineering sample processor. And we're just trying to make sure that everything works. But what is most impressive is if you were to compare these scores that we see against a 2700X. So the single core score of this 12 core part is essentially identical to that of a 2700X, which scores around 120 points. Meanwhile, in multi-thread performance, oh boy, the 2700X just gets stomped. A 2700X, obviously depending on the rest of the system configuration, scores around 1350 points, whereas this, with non-final clock speeds and only a single channel of memory, scores 1741 points, which obviously means there is a lot of room left in the tank. Oh, and a small note on the memory. I have been told from sources that have been reliable in the past that uh, AMD are looking with the Matisse platform to support memory speeds of up to 3200 megahertz, but obviously this is not confirmed yet by AMD. It also most likely means that the engineering sample processor we saw at CES 2019 was running at around the four gigahertz mark. Now we can make this guess because if we were to look at the uh, benchmark result, which was essentially the same as the i9-9900K, it was a little bit higher, but essentially identical, and we were to look at some other clock speed results of an i7 uh, 
9900 k versus a 2700 X. If they're both clocked at four gigahertz, we can see that, yes, those two processors are roughly on par with one another. So if you then to say that the i7 9900K is not locked at four gigahertz and instead is left at its stock frequencies, we could basically say that most likely AMD were running the engineering sample eight core part to match the i9 9900K at around the four gigahertz mark. That is, however, with A, napkin math, and B, the assumption that the IPC scaling is within 15% of Cinebench R15. And we also don't know what the scaling is with multi-threading when it comes to uh, SMT with the uh, Ryzen 3000 series, because we have seen a lot of changes that AMD have made with these CPUs, which may actually improve SMT performance a little bit higher than just single core performance because we have actually seen a number of changes on the front and back end, which would most likely improve SMT performance. So whether that means it's scaling better with SMT, so let's, for example, so that SMT performance has improved in terms of IPC by let's say 18 or 19%, yet single core performance is only around 15% improvement IPC, we just don't know. So there is still a lot of debate on that, but either way, my personal guess is that the engineering sample processor that we saw at CES 2019 was running at below four gigahertz mark. Lastly, I'd like to touch on final clock speed for this processor. Of course, AMD have not officially confirmed anything yet and have said that they are still tweaking things and are still working on that to figure out exactly what the final clock speeds for these CPUs would be. Also, when you're discussing clock speeds, it depends on what you're referencing. Do you mean the single core clock speed or do you mean when all 12 or 16 processor cores or however many are running fully loaded? Now, I have heard from a source, and I have said this before, that AMD have been under some pressure from partners to really increase the performance for gaming. Obviously, that's one of the ways that Intel definitely have an advantage uh, over AMD right now. And no, I don't mean, of course, if you're pairing it with a high-end GPU and you're running at 4K. Instead, I'm more referring to the popularity of the CPU uh, with, let's say, professional Counter-Strike players where every single hertz counts. So AMD to increase the maximum clock speed when just one or two processor cores is being active is most likely one of their goals right now. So personally, I would not be surprised if we did see the single core uh, clock speed of uh, the Ryzen 3000 series hit close to the five gigahertz mark. We saw uh, Jim at Adore TV, uh, according to his sources, they are uh, targeting around five gigahertz. And we also have well-known overclocker de Bauer. Now, his sources did say that the processors would be capable in some instances of hitting five gigahertz, but uh, his sources were less clear on whether this means like when they're overclocked, the processors can hit five gigahertz, whether it was an all turbo frequency five gigahertz, or whether this was like bog standard, uh, you know, it comes out of the box and this is what the CPU runs at five gigahertz. From my own personal opinion though, I don't really care on the final clock speed. All I care about is that the CPUs are impressive as hell. Oh, and a slight aside before I finish this segment, excuse me, I was actually supposed to put out a video today. In fact, I'd done pretty much all the editing uh, regarding everything you need to know about the Horizon 3000 series. And then this uh, piece of news popped up. So I have to rewrite some of it and I have to refilm some of it and then I have to re-edit it. So that kind of sucks for me, but I didn't want to put out a video that already has old information. So instead, I decided to put out this news video. And while I've got you here, I also want to provide you an update for the NVIDIA GTX 16 series of graphics cards. And yes, they are officially known as the GTX 16 series according to Hard OCP. I'll put a link to their article, of course, in the description of this very video. With hard OCP, they have told us that there are three distinctive SKUs that will be released. I'm going to provide the pricing information. According to hard, hard OCP, we will see the GTX 1660 Ti launch on February the 15th with a price point of 279 US dollars. The GTX 1660, the vanilla version, will launch in 
early March at 229 US dollars. And then the third SKU that has been confirmed at the moment is the GTX 1650. No information regarding the specifications, but the MSRP is 180 US dollars. So Nvidia are clearly filling out the uh, lower end of its graphics card lineup, which means that by around March anyway, assuming that they, these prices are accurate, it's going to pretty much mean that the Radeon 500 series will most likely be outclassed in, time, in terms of price and performance ratio. Although, as always, you're going to have to wait for actual benchmarks and to see whether there's any uh, price gouging to know whether that's really the case. My personal opinion is AMD will most likely be lowering the price as much as possible of the Radeon 500 series. We've already seen them be very aggressive with this, bundling games such as Resident Evil 2 and Devil May Cry with their GPUs. From what our sources have told us and we reported previously, we're going to see AMD announce the uh, Navi series of graphics cards in June with a release date of July. But with all of that said, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. And if you did, well, you can like the video and subscribe to the channel because that helps us out a lot. Oh, and click the bell icon as well so YouTube really knows that you want to subscribe. And uh, you can find us on social media, Patreon, uh, some Amazon affiliate links, and blah, 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 blah in the description of this very video. But for now, take care of yourself. Bye for now.